Hey, welcome back. We have a brand new module, a brand new topic, and a brand new lesson. This is lesson one, right? You got a brand new book even. Everything's brand new right now. So let's just start fresh. We're gonna start fresh. We're gonna make sure everything is done right. Uh, so what do we got? Page 483, we're learning about the inverses of power functions. Now, before we get into those details, we have to remember what a function is, right? So Page 43 at the bottom says, determine whether each graph represents a function. Explain your reasoning. So pause the video and then uh, do numbers one, two, and three. Ready, set, go. So how do we do that again? Is it a function? Well, I'm going to use the vertical line test. If you remember, the vertical line test, you draw a vertical line through the graph at every point, And if it only intersects one time, then it is a function. So if you notice, number one is a function because if you notice a vertical line here only intersects the graph one time, which means for every input or the x value, there's only one output or one y value. Let's go number two here. Number two, if you notice number two, if we have x equals two, that would be the input. Do you notice how we have two outputs, right? We would have two outputs. That's failing the vertical line test. We have one here, we have one here. Okay, fails the vertical line test, so this is not a function. And then I'm gonna look over here, vertical line test seems to pass. It, it kind of looks like it touches more than once here, but it doesn't. It actually just kind of gradually goes up and through zero. And so this would be a function. Here are my answers. The first and third one are functions. However, number two is not. All right, that reviews what a function is. Let's go. Let's look at power functions, okay? Do you remember what a power function is? It's, you know, the function y equals x, y equals x squared, y equals x cubed, so on and so forth. And then we want to look at what happens when we switch the independent, which we know that that is the x value, right? The independent variable is the x value, and the dependent, and you guessed it, that is the y. So we're going to go to page 492, and we're going to look at, oh, that is messed up. All right, we fixed it. But we're gonna look at what happens when we switch the X and the Y. So what happens when we switch the independent and the dependent variables? That's a good question. What will the graph look like? Now our first graph here, here's, our, here's how we're gonna do it. I'm going to select some points uh, from each of the graphs. We're gonna start with, this is L of X equals X, but it's essentially the line Y equals X, right? Diagonal line here goes through the origin, it's Y equals X. So I'm gonna list some points, and then I'm gonna switch X and Y, and I'm going to plot that and see what happens. So let's list some points down here. I'm gonna to go to the graph, and I'm gonna find some points. So I like this point, because it's right in the middle, so that's zero, zero. And maybe I use this point, so that's negative. What do we got, one, two, three, negative three, negative three. And maybe I'll just pick a point up here, four, four. So I just looked at the graph, and I I pick some points and I'm gonna switch X and Y. So when I switch X and Y, let's switch and we're gonna see what happens. We get zero, zero. And then we would get negative three, negative three. Yep, that's after we switched them. And then what do we get? Switch X and Y, we get four, four. Hopefully you figured out that there's not much change. And if we were to graph the line, we'd actually get this, right? I mean, it's the same line I kind of drew it up just, it's really close. But you get the same line here, y equals x. So if we switch x and y, we get the same line for y equals x. But that's not going to happen over here for x squared. So let's find some, if we have y equals x squared, let's find some points that we can plot. Uh, I'll start over here in the negative region in quadrant 2. I'm just going to look at the graph. All right, we have 0, 0. I also went through the rest of the graph, and I found some points that are on it. And remember, what we want to do is just see what the graph looks like. So here are some points that I found. Uh, we want to see what the graph looks like if we switch X and Y. So for each one of these, I'm going to switch X and Y, the coordinates here. And then we'll see what the graph looks like. So let's do that. And here are the coordinates I get after I switch X and Y. All I'm doing is switching X and Y. And now I'm going to put them on the graph just so I can see what the graph looks like when we switch X and Y. So zero, zero is also right here. We have five, negative seven. So one, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is gonna be about right here. There's our first point. And then we have eight, negative nine. 
And then it'll be down here. Okay, we have one, three. Go over one, and then we go up three. One, two, three. So I plot all these points in five, seven. So maybe here's five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if you notice what's happening, I'm getting that same U shape. Oh, I'm gonna try my best right now. And here's the shape we, we get. Now, if you look at it, you can see the U shape and it's just pointing to the right because we're gonna switch X and Y, right? So that means this is the Y direction then, and then this becomes the X for the blue. So let me write this. This is the X, this becomes the Y. So does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, it's still X, you go over so many, squared. Now one thing I, ha I do have to point this out. This is a terrible job graphing by Carnegie here in your book because it's supposed to be y equals x squared and if I go over x it's not it's not the squared number of units. They didn't label the axes as what happened here. They just kind of changed the axis and so the whole graph fits on here because we're really just concerned today about what the graph the shape of it looks like. So Yes, if you're asking yourself, why doesn't the y equal the x squared in any of these points? It's true. It's because the scale is off a little bit. But we want to look at the shape. I mean, what is the shape? What happened? It looks like this got turned clockwise 90 degrees. And there's this point right here. I don't know if you noticed this, but if we take that same line y equals x and I put it right down the middle here, notice it's a reflection. This is called a reflection. If you took geometry, then you know that a reflection, you go to the line in the same distance over. And so there's every every point on the black graph will map to a point on the blue graph. And that is true if you reflect it through the line, it'll be its opposite match over there. So what do we learn from all of this? We learn that if we switch X and Y, then what happens is the graph will turn and it gets reflected through the line Y equals X. So now as we look at you know, y equals x to the third and x to the fourth. These are functions. You know the shape of them, right? Because we've already studied that. And I'm not going to pick individual points now. What I'm going to do is just use that line y equals x. We can put that right down here. And it goes through the middle. And can we figure out what would happen if we were to switch the x and the y? Can we just sketch that? I'm going to try my best right now. I don't know if it's going to work. But, you know, as you crawl up the x-axis, this function would crawl up the y-axis. And if you need the points to help you, you can kind of do that as a guide. This is the point 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. So the point 4, 1 is kind of close to being on it. So I could go up 4 and over 1. So that point would go here. It would kind of curl up like this. And then it goes all the way to this meeting point. Oh, that was pretty close. And the same thing would happen on this side. And then uh, I try my best. All right, but that's what the function looks like if you were to switch X and Y. I want you to do the rest of the power function. So pause the video and then you sketch the rest of the power functions if you were to switch X and Y. Go. Okay, so you know my sketches won't be the best. So yours don't have to be the best. But this is what I got for the fourth power, X to the fourth, and then X to the fifth looks a lot like x to the third, right? It looks like x cubed, and x to the sixth looks, um, they're getting worse and worse. The graphs are getting worse and worse. So now, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna look at whether these, they're called inverses, whether the inverse, that's the blue lines, are, it's when you switch x and y, it's called the inverse. Are the inverses of these functions, functions themselves? And sometimes the answer is yes, and sometimes the answer is no. So let's go back to the beginning. Okay, remember y equals x was on the same line. I'm gonna do a vertical line test again. Let's do that. Vertical line, all right. We're gonna do a vertical line test and see if it passes. Obviously y equals x passes because it only crosses at one time. So now I'm looking at the blue, remember I'm looking at the blue function here. Uh, y equals x squared when I look at the inverse, when I switch x and y, check it out. It crosses twice, fails the vertical line test. So this is not a function. Let's. Look over here. You can probably guess what's going to happen. Oh, I don't need that line. I need a vertical line. We're doing vertical line test. So what about this function right here? X to the third, is it passing everywhere? It is passing everywhere. But X to the fourth fails. Have you noticed a pattern? Let's do one more here. And we'll do the vertical line test on this. Um, this is passing as well. X to the fifth passes, but X to the sixth fails. So hopefully now you have come to a conclusion. On page 490 here it says use your trace graphs and uh, we're not going to talk about Deanna's strategy here but what did the inverse of 
X to the fourth look like? Well, that kind of looked like this U, right? So we know what that looks like. Oh, that is terrible. Let's not have, oh. Y'all, y'all, struggle's real. And then the inverse of X to the fifth, that kind of looked like this, didn't it? And then it came down and kind of looked like that. Just a rough sketch. And then X to the sixth was very much like the fourth. It's a little, little box here. Whoa, I had to redo that one. But if you notice the even functions, the even power functions, when you switch X and Y, their inverse is not a function. Remember, these blue lines are called the inverse. So it's not a function for the even. But for the odd, it still is a function. So when the inverse of a function f is also a function, the function is an invertible function. Invertible means you can switch x and y, and that new function or that new relationship will be a function. Here's how we write inverse. It has f of negative 1. So if they say f of x uh, equals x to the fourth, f of negative 1, but what do we say? The inverse of x. That's what we'll say. The inverse of x is how we will talk about that. So which of the six power functions uh, are invertible, we could write down that all of the power functions with an odd power, right? So 3 and 5 are invertible because their inverses pass the vertical line test. Now, next level, I know we're flipping back and forth. This was page 490, right? Because we moved to 490. Let's go back to page 492. It's the next page. Switch it. Is there a way to figure out if the function will pass a vertical line test before you draw the graph? In other words, like see how this one fails, right? Could we have figured that out by looking at the graph? We have another type of test, and that is called, let me see if you can figure it out. We're going to go like this, okay? And we're going to see if the graph intersects more than once when we move a horizontal line across the graph. Now let's go over here to this graph right here, x to the 6th. Do you see how a horizontal line will intersect twice? Well, if that happens, then I know that the vertical line will also intersect twice once I look at the inverse. So we come up with a new tool to see if a function is invertible. We can look at the horizontal line test. If a horizontal line, if I'm looking at the original function and a horizontal line intersects, oh, Mr. Kelly's having a hard time today. If a horizontal line intersects a function more than once, then we know its inverse is not invertible. It's not an invertible function. So here's what we can write down for number three and four on 490. When a graph passes both the horizontal and a vertical line test, what can you conclude? Well, it must be an invertible function, of course. When the graph passes both horizontal and vertical line test, the graph with an inverse is also a function. And then for number four, when a graph passes the vertical line test, but not the horizontal line test, we know that its inverse is not a function. So it's not called invertible. How about that? Okay, let's go to page 494. I know we're jumping all over the place, but number three on 494. It says, determine whether the inverse of the graphed function is also a function. So this is not a power function, right? It's got a little, it's got a little bloop in it right there, but we're gonna determine whether the inverse is also a function. We're gonna explain our reasoning. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that. First, we're gonna see if this is a function. So let's check out the vertical line test. Will this pass the vertical line test? And yes, it does. Everywhere, it only intersects one time. So then we'll go from that and we'll check the horizontal line test. We'll put a horizontal line through it. And if you look right here, we're going to have some issues, right? Grab the tissues because we have, where does it intersect? One time, two times, three times, four times. So. It intersects four times. So now I know that the inverse of this function, which let's just sketch that out for a second. Here's what that inverse might look like. Notice how it's reflected in line y equals x. Um, rough sketch. But notice that would fail the vertical line test. So for three, we would say, no, it is not a function. The inverse is not because it does not pass the horizontal line test. Let's go back to the very beginning and see if we met all of our learning goals today. Uh, did we learn how to sketch graph of inverses? I think we did. And using the vertical line test to see if it's a function, did that. We determined whether a function is invertible. We use a horizontal line test to determine whether a function is invertible. And we generalized about even and odd degree power functions. That's it, man. That is lesson one. Good luck on your mastery check. This one's easy. This is easy.